allergies, break-ins, weather. And I'm bringing sexy back. <laughs> Let's get it, guys. <laughs> What's going on, guys? It's been a minute. I know. I know. It's been a minute. It's been a couple of months since you've seen an update from your boy Camo. I know y'all thought, what was going on with Camo? What's happening with Camo? <laughs> but I'm back, baby. All day. Y'all know who I am, man. Welcome. Welcome to Life Update Cuatro. Cuatro. Number four. Let me tell you a little secret. My Spanish is good for somebody who ain't never took a day of Spanish. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Guys, we got about three months of shit to talk about, okay? Got a lot of stuff here. I really, first of all, want to thank everybody that's going to stay and watch this from the beginning to the end. Love y'all guys. I want to thank everybody that's going to watch this in pieces. Love y'all guys. And for everybody that's going to see this, this, this is like about an hour, 45 minutes, or whatever this is going to end up to be, I have no clue until it's over with. I still love you. Because you're probably just going to go to the next video. It's okay. I love you. <laughs> Let's get started, man. Oh, how's Camo doing, first and foremost? As you can hear from me, guys, a little bit, I'm kind of kind of like uh, clogged up here. And what it is is my allergies. My allergies are killing me. Uh, apparently, and I didn't know this, apparently, Cedar thinks that it's spring it's still winter guys and that's another topic we'll get to here in a little bit but cedar seems to think it's spring and it's blooming out here and it is absolutely causing havoc with my allergies i mean what's happening is my nose is just completely clogged up i have to breathe through my mouth i've gone through four or five different allergy medicines decongestants it's a nightmare i've never had this kind of problem with my allergies ever in my entire life of having allergies, which I just found that I had about three, four years ago. But other than that, I'm doing okay, guys. February 28th, which just passed last month, marks year number one that I've been in Oklahoma. So that is a large memento for myself, guys. Uh, it's just, it's a beautiful thing to have, to have been here for one year Somebody who had no idea how Oklahoma was going to turn out for him. He just put his foot in the car and his foot on the pedal and just went out there and hit the road. And I've been here for a whole year and I'm still alive. I'm still living. I'm not dead. So all is good, man. Uh, life in the RV. I mean, just, just think about this, guys. One year ago, I wanted to do a couple of things. I wanted to live in an RV. I wanted to minimize my life, and I wanted to simply enjoy life at the smallest level. And I think I have accomplished that. I'm living in an RV. I've learned a lot about this. I have a part-time job, and I'm living on a part-time job. I don't have a second job. I'm living on a part-time job. Guys, you can't beat that. You can't beat that. I'm actually doing a fantastic job, guys. Uh, about a month ago... I was at work and we we're putting up, I was basically replacing the screens and the doors at our group camp. And we use these metal grates to put behind the screen so that they don't punch out the screen. Well, in the process of me putting that together, I dropped one of those heavy, they're not really heavy, but they're metal, heavy grates, down on one of my toes. The toe next to my little one on my left, on my right foot. And I'm gonna tell you something, it hurt. I was limping for probably about a week. And after I limped for that, probably about that week, maybe a week and a half, it started to get better. So I wasn't hiking for about a week and a half there. I wasn't really hiking before then either. I wanted to start then, but you know how that happens. You know, you want to do something, all of a sudden something happens to stop you from doing it. But my toe is better. Life is moving on. Oh, we got so much to talk about, guys. Where do I start at? Okay, so let's start with the RV. So, a couple of things. I have 
as far as the current leaks that I had before, so I, I, again, I don't remember where I was at as far as my last update. Uh, as far as the big window where, where I sleep at, no leaks. I've got that all sealed up. And I'll probably show y'all guys a picture of what I ended up having to do with it. Uh, it's a little crude, but it is definitely something that I had to do to solve the problem at hand. I now have... I'm down to two leaks. One I just found it I had the other day, and one that I've had I just can't, I don't know how to solve it. My Blackwater valve, I told you the story about the Blackwater valve. It is still have a very small leak. And I've got it to the point now where it, sometimes it leaks, sometimes it doesn't. So it's not a real big issue right now. Uh, I'm, I'm dealing with it. it. It basically starts to leak when the tank gets about three quarters full which is when you should be emptying your black ore tank anyway. But basically when pressure gets on the valve, it it just goes haywire. I've tried a number of different things. I'm still trying to figure that thing out for it. So, But we got that problem on deck. Uh, yesterday, day before yesterday, we had a nice little thunderstorm. Uh, had hail for about four hours. Yeah, Oklahoma's some crazy weather here, guys. But... I woke up to water dripping on the inside, water pouring, and I look over to my kitchen sink, and there's water coming down the side, down to the floor, and into the bathroom. I knew I had a small leak somehow in my kitchen area. I think I know where it's at. I'm trying to show y'all guys some videos of that, and I'm going to go ahead and seal that, and I'll let y'all guys know what the issue is there. But what I'm pointing to is where I think the water is coming in at, and it's, it's an opening behind the window right there. And that is where I think the water is coming in. So I'm going to seal that as best as I can using Smell of the Roses roof caulking and metal shield, uh, metal window caulking, and also some other stuff I have behind it. And I'll see if I can stop the leak there, and I'll let y'all guys know probably in the next update how that uh, leak is actually coming along. Uh, <laughs> my plumbing. So you know I still don't have... I still don't have running water in the RV. Um, and it's because I kept finding leak after leak after leak. I got to the kitchen, it leaked, and I noticed that everything all the way back to the hot water heater was leaking. <laughs> so here's the deal, guys. Gas is not operational in this RV. Okay? Because it needs an overhaul and I have no idea what needs to be done to it. I looked down the uh, pilot light tube and they were uh, uh, they were uh, dirt dauber nest inside there. Nightmare to try to get that out of there. The stove doesn't work. The gas doesn't work. The, the hot water heater is gas. The stove is gas. And the heat is gas. So right now how I'm bypassing that is I'm cooking with electric components. <laughs> Crock pot, electric uh, skillet stove stuff uh, electric eye uh, heat I'm using uh, electric heaters and hot water I'm heating up my water to use for washing dishes and any other reason why I need to to heat up water uh, I've come to the conclusion that hot water is not a running hot water is not a necessity in this RV okay it's just not gonna work in this RV so what I'm going to do, and I've already kind of done this before, and I'm going to show you guys a little bit of how this thing is designed later. But I'll actually go ahead and show you now. So what it is, is it comes from the sink. And as you can see, the angle this thing comes through, this small little hole, and then it comes below there, and then it just kind of goes over the wheel well and down to the joint. The stress that this cable is on I don't know why this thing didn't leak all the time every time but what I'm going to do to fix that is I'm basically just going to reroute that cable I'm going to right where you see where the uh, cold water line you see where it's cut right there that's the cold water line so I'm going to cut it I've already cut it right behind there what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an elbow right there and run it straight up over and up to the cold water side so the only way the only water I'll have in this RV is cold water so I have cold water to my kitchen sink cold water to my bathroom sink cold water to the toilet and cold water to the shower which I don't use a shower anyway but the rest of those things I do use 
I did a little small test of it the other week and it works. Pressure is great with just cold water. So I hope to get that worked out really well for me. I have to buy the parts. That's the expensive part. And I, again, I have to wait till I have funds to do it. But once I buy the parts and I think, um, I can't remember my, my, my good subscriber's name, but I think they referenced, uh, a, like a, uh, auto seal joint. I forget exactly what you got. Quick, quick connects. Uh, I forget exactly what the name of the, uh, quick connect is called i'll put it across the screen because i can't remember what it is now but i'm going to make sure that all those are brass going up to there and that should solve the problem i should get cold water running in this in this rv because everything else is sealed if i could just get cold water that would be greatly and fantastic guys so no hot water only cold water that's what i'm planning for to report on to you guys on the next video uh, I had an opportunity because when I first moved out here, my air conditioner needed to be cleaned. But I moved out here in August. There was no way in the world I was going to take that air conditioner apart and clean it and put it back and take the chance of it not working in the middle of August in Oklahoma. Okay? Not happening. So I left it up all summer, most of winter, and I, and I was going to take a chance to clean it this winter. And that's what I did. About a couple of weeks ago, I took it down, cleaned it out, blew it out, washed it up and put it back up there. I was actually expecting the filters to just dis disintegrate when I took them out, but they didn't, which tells me it probably has never been cleaned. So it worked out well for me. The filters work out fine. Nothing is, everything's working fine now and it's a lot cleaner. So what I'm gonna do is because I've already cleaned it and I can actually do it on camera, what I'm going to do is actually go back and do a video of me taking my air conditioner from the inside apart and show you the components and everything you need to clean and how to put it back together. So it won't actually be dirty versus clean in the end, but it'll be a video to just kind of show you guys who have a Coleman Mock air conditioner, which is what I have, how to clean it up. I got an opportunity to uh, repair my RV screen door. And some of the videos, probably some of my vlogs... I probably showed the door and it was it was terrible it was a, it was a metal screen door it had been kicked out at the bottom there were holes in it it was absolutely ridiculous I didn't have the money to, to fix it or the time to fix it at the time so what I did is I waited until I got some money and I went and bought some what they call pet resistant screening which is kind of tinted and I took some time and actually put the screen in there and I think it looks great uh, Ace likes it. He can look outside. He can see other doggies. and He can almost see me depending if I don't go around the other edge of the RV. <laughs> I like it. I think it's nice. One of the other updates I'm also going to do is I'm going to update the fluorescent lighting in here. So I don't like fluorescent tubes because they go out. Ballasts go bad. And you have all kind of issues out of fluorescent lighting. So I'm going to upgrade the fluorescent lighting to LED light strips, which bypasses a ballast altogether. It's the, the ballast is not ever used. It's used in just straight power. I have a fluorescent light in the bathroom, which works fine right now. And I have a fluorescent light above me that has never worked since I've been here. And I'm pretty sure that the ballast is bad. I just can't, re I mean, I can replace the ballast, but the ballast would cost me $20. It's one of those electronic board ballasts. It's not the enclosed little box ballasts. So it would be a nightmare to even take it off of there because I think it's glued and screwed to the roof, which is absolutely stupid. But I'm going to bypass that ballast and I'm going to upgrade it to LED light strips, which should give me twice the light and save me twice the energy. So that's, that's a plus right there, guys. Oh, and those lights should cost me total for both kits $20. So $20 I can upgrade uh, two fluorescent lightings and save energy in my RV, which I can use on other things plugged in because I only have a 30 amp RV. Let's talk a little bit about the weather, guys. So I, I talked a little bit about it in the intro. Weather this year in Oklahoma, winter this year in Oklahoma has been nuts, from what I understand. This is my f my second winter here. When I came February of last year, 2015, uh, it was snowing. It was cold as crap. It was icing. 
It was it was just winter, which you expect out of Oklahoma. <laughs> this winter has been absolutely the complete opposite, guys. Uh, I think the lowest it got in winter, I think that was in January, was 17 degrees. And then after that, it's been like 70 degrees in the afternoons, 80 degrees, which is crazy. We actually got two snow days that I know of because I was working on both those days. Uh, we got a snow day in December. Yes, folks, what you're seeing right now is snow in December, in winter, in Oklahoma. Canadian Oklahoma, to be exact. Isn't this fucking cool? Isn't this fucking cool? That was pretty freaking cool, right? And then we got another snow day in January. Yeah. Snowing again. Less than three weeks. Really? <laughs> I ain't got no sense, man. No sense at all, dog. But it's it's just been crazy for what I'm told. And everybody here in Oklahoma is telling me, you know, don't don't wipe out the fact that winter's gone because they've gotten snow in April here. So cold weather can still happen. We're actually supposed to be getting rain all next week. Which is why I need to get that window sealed up as much as possible. But yeah, weather at winter has been actually pretty nuts here uh, this year in Oklahoma. Ace. So, you guys want to know how Ace is doing. Ace is doing great. He's actually laying in the bed up here asleep listening to Daddy do his video to you guys. Uh, he's doing really well. He loves the space. He loves the fact that it's his space and Daddy's space. That he can sleep where he wants, eat when he wants, drink when he wants. And he had a little stomach virus about a month ago where he was just kind of throwing up, pooping, liquid, all, you know, it was just kind of that deal. But he only had it for like 12 hours and then he was fine. So I guess in dogs, the 24 hour flu that humans have is like half the flu in them. It's like a 12 hour flu for him. So, but he had that, and ever since then, he's been absolutely perfect for fun. So, Ace is doing really well. I have to go buy him a new uh, collar, and I can't remember the name of it. I'll put the name of the collar Flea Collar, Flea Tick, and uh, Flea Tick, and something else collar. I think it's Sorrenta or something like that. That I put on him last year in April, it lasts eight months. I believe eight or nine months something like that uh, but it's a great dog collar and literally if any ticks get on him they're dead within 24 hours I'm picking dead ticks off of ace when I have that collar on him so it's a great collar and it's a little pricey it's about 60 bucks for his size dog which is about mid-sized dog small to medium uh, but it's well worth the money so I, I gotta put some money aside to get that here in a couple of weeks because Soon as spring gets here, ticks and fleas and all that stuff's gonna be coming back. So, uh, let's talk a little bit about some other news. Kind of, you know, not really have a topic or title, if you will. So, the first day of 2016, all the state parks in Oklahoma that I know of have what they call a first day hike. And basically, what it is is the state park picks a trail or a series of trails and they invite the public to come hike with them on the first day of january the first day hike so we have first day hike at arizona state park excuse me arizona state park i am still in the mindset of arizona arrowhead state park and it was fun i didn't do any video because i was actually working that day but hiking uh but it was really nice and uh something that we do every year so maybe next year i'll get some video of that and uh, see if I can actually put something up for you guys. If you have not seen it, the first episode of Hiking with Camo has aired. It is on YouTube, on my channel. Go check it out. I think it aired a couple of weeks ago. Go check it out. Arrowhead State Park, the number nine mountain trail. Wonderful trail, guys. And you get to see my new little hiking buddy. <laughs> so on the technical side, I had some laptop issues. 
about a month and a half ago. Excuse me, guys, allergies. Uh, about a month and a half ago, and most of you guys know me, you know that I've done IT for 14 years. And that was my career. So having laptop issues is not a problem for me. Having the money to fix the laptop issues is now the problem for me. Basically what it was is I use iMovie to do all of my YouTube videos. <laughs> iMovie takes up a lot of memory. Uh, once you actually open up iMovie, you're doing about 3.2 gigs of memory being taken up if you've got 4 gigs or uh, 6 gigs, I think, or something like that that I had in my laptop. Uh, and then once you start to produce a movie or finalize a movie, then it jumps up and it just freezes on you. It kills the application. So I basically had to order new memory. I ordered 16 gigs of memory to go in my, in my MacBook Pro. And now it's updated. I also had to do some other house cleaning things in there that's kind of build up. <laughs> Caching, stuff like that that needs to be dumped. And old photos. You know how it is, guys. You clean out your laptop. If you don't, you need to do that because it really would help out. But once I did that, everything was pretty much kosher. And she was back to working like a champ. So she's good to go now. I have a crock pot that I think you guys have seen in my first couple of cooking videos that was given to me by Biddy Boo Brown. Thank you again, Biddy. Uh, when I, before I moved down here, she gave it to me as a gift. And I lost that crock pot here about two months ago. Uh, what happened, me not thinking, is one of two things happened. Either I cooked something and of course the crock pot is hot and then I took the leftovers and left it in the crock pot and then put the crock pot in the refrigerator which heat to cold crack or what I did is I took the crock pot after cooking something put the uh, leftovers in another container then took that hot crock pot put it in the cold dish water or something like that hot to cold crack or I dropped it in the sink which cracked it Otherwise, on the bottom, there was a humongous crack on it. So I had to go buy me a new crock pot. And as you can see, I picked the most stylish and appropriate one for where I was at, baby. Hey, 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 hey. Do not hate. Do not hate. Appreciate. Sooners, baby. <laughs> I did not get an opportunity to file my taxes last year, 2015. 14, excuse me, before I moved here to Arizona. Didn't get a chance to do it. So I have not filed my taxes for a whole year. A little shaggy on that. This year I can do it. But I'm kind of worried about how much I'm going to actually owe because I think I, it said I owed like three, $400 from Arizona, which is absolutely nuts. I think it's because of the Obamacare thing. Don't get me started on that. But I was concerned this year because I have that to file and then this year, this year should help me, but last year I don't know how hard it's going to hurt me. Uh, so I got lucked out. Uh, one of the ladies in the front office, somehow the conversation of taxes came up and she said something about she had somebody coming from another town to do their taxes. And I said, you do taxes? She says, yeah. I said, really? She said, how much do you charge? And she said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll strike a deal with you. She says, I have a storage unit. I need to get some stuff moved around, thrown away, shifted. It's going to take me most of the day by myself to do it. She said, if you help me rearrange stuff in my storage unit and get rid of the old crap and all that good stuff, I'll have no problems taking care of your taxes for you. Sweet. So hopefully get my taxes done and pray to God that nothing really, really goes bad, guys, because... I need a break. I really, really need some serious breaks when it comes to that. So we will see. I also did some, I guess you can call it spring cleaning or more like winter cleaning because what ended up happening is over the course of me being in this RV, I try to keep as much stuff in here with me so I don't have to go out of it to the storage unit, which is right behind me. But what ended up happening is you have all these clothes packed in this little small closet over here and I have to go rifling through the closet to find clothes and that's just irritating you know what I mean so what I ended up doing is saying okay I only need no more because I don't do anything special I don't need dress up I don't go anywhere I go to work I come home I go to church I come home 
Uh, I go hiking. I come home. So just the basic things. You know, I have about five sets of clothes in my closet in here in, in the bathroom. And those clothes get rotated and washed every week. And that's what I wear. And all the extra stuff that was there is now in my storage unit. So it frees up space and allows me to have a little bit more room and a little bit more. <sighs> I know you guys are freaking out. Oh, my God. If I can't have 14 different options of outfits, what am I going to do? You will live. You will. I promise you, you will live. Uh, Real quick. I don't want to go into the details of this thing, guys, but about a month ago, there was a break-in here at the RV park. Uh, there was a guy that's about three sites up to me that's no longer there. Four sites up for me. That was there for about two months. He did work for the docks, and he was gone away from his RV for almost a month for some reason. Wife problems, marriage problems, I don't know. He was gone for about a month. Well, apparently in this time, there was another group of people, three spaces up from me that moved in. Uh, these people never knew them, they looked kind of shady, but they moved up from me and they were there. Uh, all of a sudden, this guy's RV gets broken into. They steal everything. They steal his guns, television, whatever was valuable inside his RV they took. <laughs> Of course, I don't know why you would keep that many guns uh, inside of your RV. But anyway. And turns out that this guy three places up for me was caught coming out of his RV when that was noticed. When they searched the guy's RV, that the other guy three up for me, and he didn't find anything in his RV that belonged to the other guy, but it was just kind of suspicious. And I tell you this story because since being here in Crowder in this RV, I when I went to go walk Ace around the park and back, I never locked my RV door because this was a safe neighborhood. And now that that's happened, anytime I leave with Ace to go walk him, I always lock my door down. I mean, honestly, I live in an RV. If somebody wants to get in here, they can get in here, but they're not going to be able to take anything. The very most valuable and most important thing to me is my little buddy Ace. Uh, but it, it just kind of sets your mind back, guys. You know, you think you're comfortable, and then all of a sudden something like that happens, and you just got to go, ooh, well, maybe, maybe I need to start locking my stuff back, you know? But it is what it is. It happens, right? Couple of shout-outs. Couple of shout-outs. Couple of shout-outs. Birthdays and thank yous. Birthdays. Happy birthday. Happy belated birthday. I think your birthday was in January. To Jen from Girls Like Guns 2. Love you, Jen. Happy belated birthday again. I think I already told you birthday. Before. happy birthday before. Happy birthday to my sister Sandy out in South Carolina. Love you, sis. Happy birthday. He just had a recent birthday to... Josh from Pink Baggers for Cancer. Love you, brother. Happy birthday. I hope you had a great birthday. Uh, congratulations on, and I hope you get that new web development job, man. I know how it is going to college and coming out and getting that first job, man. You get that first one, bam. It's just straight up, man. I'm telling you, I've been doing what I've been doing for 14 years. I've been through a lot of ups and downs, but it's always good to have somebody give you that first shot, baby. So good luck with that, man. Uh, thank you to... My sister Sandy out in South Carolina, she sent me my very first electric blanket. We were having a conversation in the middle of winter when it was actually cold. I think it was in December. And she just kind of asked the question, are you staying warm enough? Do you have enough of blankets? I said, well, you can never have too many blankets. And she said, hold on. And basically what happened is she went on Amazon to order me my first electric blanket. Awesome blanket. Absolutely love it. Never had one before. Ace loves it. Anytime I turn it on, he's right up next to me. Uh, he loves to be up under it, too. But thank you, Sandy. I truly, truly appreciate it. <laughs> uh, Pete Baggins for Cancer. Josh, message to you, brother, personally. I know that we talked about uh, us doing a hike. 
last year in the spring, but that got put off because things just were chaotic for me. Uh, so we put it off to this year in spring. I don't think that I'm going to be able to do anything with you this spring because I'm still financially not capable of doing that. But if we can do it, I don't know if you've already hiked that section. I really hope you haven't, but if you have, that's cool. Uh, let's put it off for spring of 2017. And what we'll do... Spring of 2017, I should financially hopefully be in a better position. And I should be able to come out there where you're at. Don't know. I don't want to put that out there yet. But let's put it off to next spring. If you can. If not, I understand. We'll figure something else out. But uh, I really would appreciate it, brother. And again, happy birthday, man. <laughs> Last but not least, guys. A couple of... Uh, excuse me. Allergies are just acting up now. <laughs> couple of upcoming videos that you're going to see from me when I get a chance to knock those out, which hopefully will be pretty soon. Um, my last life update, I mentioned that I was saved and I turned my life over to God, Jesus Christ. Some of you know who I'm talking about. If you don't know who God is, you need to go find out who he is. But I turned my life over to God and... Big Bankers for Cancer asked me to send him a message about my story, about how I came to know God. Well, Josh, you know as well as I do that it's a lot easier to a lot easier to send somebody uh, to make a video than it is to sit down and type and send somebody a message, a whole story, especially a story. So what I'm going to do is make a video on especially that topic, Josh. So. Hopefully you enjoy that, and other people out there get some enjoy out of it also. Never know. Maybe my story will inspire you to seek Jesus. I'm going to be doing two other important videos to me, and hopefully they will help folks out there that are looking to do something like this. I think Frogger M3, we talked briefly what's going on with Frogger. Uh, he wanted to make a move in his life, and he had a bunch of questions, concerns, and I'm sure he wants to know how I did what I did. And, and so what I'm going to do is two videos. Uh, one will be a five-year RV plan. Uh, I'm going to explain to you what my goals are in the next five years and when that clock starts for me. Also, I'm going to talk to you guys about my RV budget. So living the way I do with a part-time job in this small RV, obviously financial is an issue. And I have not done this as of yet, but I will sit down and make a budget and basically give you guys my RV budget and I will follow that budget. And as I do life updates, I will give you guys updates on how that budget is doing for me. And finally, something big, hopefully something big will be happening for your boy uh, Camel in the spring. <laughs> It's a big move. I don't want to get into it right now because I don't want to jinx it. Uh, but there's been a lot of up, down, ah, uh, should I, shouldn't I, have I, when I think about this, uh, you know, this doesn't sound right. A lot of that's been going on right now and I finally come to a decision. I'm going to wait for this thing to happen in the spring. I'm not going to talk about it more than that right now, but uh, when it does happen, I'll do a video with it. And give y'all the whole story because it just it's a huge story behind it. A lot of my emotions are gonna get poured into that video. And I I'm just I'm gonna wait and do a video on that. So something big happened for your boy Camo. I'm moving on up, as it's saying the Jeffersons, baby. I'm doing the the, the James the George Jefferson. What? <laughs> moving on up, man. Springtime. Hopefully Camo can can uh keep the progress moving forward, baby. But Guys, that's pretty much it. That is the update. Uh, again, I want to thank all my subscribers. Thank you guys for continually tuning into my channel and watching my material and sharing it, liking it, commenting. I love to have the communication between you guys. I don't have internet as much as I do, but whenever I see a comment, I respond to it as quickly as possible. Again, thank you guys for being where you are. I got some stuff on the stove heating up. I'm getting ready to fry me some fish. The fish? No, I'm going to fry me some deer steaks. Deep fried deer steaks. Oh boy, that's going to be good. 
But uh, until then, guys, we'll check y'all guys out next time. I love all y'all in that tube right there, baby. Every single one of y'all. We'll catch y'all next time on Life Update. Wow. Number five. <laughs> Later, guys. Peace. It's your boy.